Hey everyone, uh, in the last video, I talked a little bit about aromatic stability, some rules and understanding how to determine whether a molecule is aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic. And I also touched on a little bit about the para-meta-ortho uh, orientations on a benzene ring when you're doing reactions and how um, and what kind of groups will orient your, your uh, reactions in those kind of configurations. And I just want to start the video by going over a little bit about, um, just kind of explain, give a little bit more background about the whole para ortho meta. And really, what it has to do with, if you look at it right here, this is from the book. Uh, it's really good uh, visualization of this. So here we have like a group on the ring, right? <clears throat> this is a OCH3 group, and it's a donating group. Uh, this donating group is going to orient, we know donating groups orient the, the next substituents or the next reactions in the ortho or para positions. And this kind of demonstrates what happens when the ring attacks something uh, using a double bond that orients it in the ortho, so here, or the para position. And it's showing you the resonance structures that result once a double bond within the ring is broken and the different kind of structures that result from that. So what you can see is that um, the ortho and para positions provide a very uh, a very stable resonance structure that the meta position cannot give. And it has to do with getting this position right here, that the carbon connect to the oxygen, uh, the donating group, uh, to become, uh, to have the carbocation, and eventually allowing the oxygen to donate its electrons, actually. So this, is, this kind of explains um, why these positions are, are so... Um, so conducive to getting you the ortho and, ortho and para. And then if you want to take a look at uh, when you have a uh, withdrawing group, right? I'm just going to put this over it. So when you have a withdrawing group, right, it's the it's the opposite. Let's get next to it. Um, so a withdrawing group will actually, whenever you have something that's withdrawing and you have some kind of, you know, attack, right, and the double bond is broken, um, the ortho and para positions give you very unstable um, carbocations, and the meta position is just the only one that doesn't give something that's <clears throat> pretty unstable. And so, therefore, this this kind of attack with a withdrawing group on the ring gives you a meta substituted uh, benzene ring. And so, this is you know the two two different um, views looking at the resonance structures about why certain types of groups orient the you know the reactants the substituents in certain ways around the ring and so just to recap if you have a donating group it's ortho para if you have a withdrawing group it's meta okay and with that that pretty much is the understanding that you need to go forward with the reactions so the first reaction that uh, we're going to do is uh, they're, they're pretty they're pretty they're pretty straightforward at first um and and these reactions are only a little bit more difficult because you have a lot more things going on. And so we talked about aromatic uh, aromatic stability, right? And aromatic aromatic stability um, is a very is a state for for the benzene ring. Um, it explains why the benzene ring is so stable. And because it's so stable, the benzene ring is not easily reactive, right? Because we can relate reactivity with stability. And so the more unstable something is, or the higher energy that it has, the more uh, the more uh, readily it reacts with things that it can, you know, for example, a double bond readily reacts with a an acid, right, HBr or HCl. And so um, when we dealing with benzene rings, we can't we can't react a benzene ring with HBr or HCl or or any kind of things, right? That we normally can react double bonds. All our double double bond reactions, are H3O plus. We have to do uh, more things to the the ring. We have to in introduce, you know, more creative methods about how to uh to make the to make the ring more nucleophilic or sometimes more electrophilic, right? So depending on what we're doing. But a lot of times we're trying to make the ring more nucleophilic relatively to what is, is being available and present it to something that's very electrophilic so that the reaction can actually occur. So I'm going to demonstrate this a bit by um, showing you the first reaction. Okay, And so the first reaction is 
Okay, so very much like how our first reaction with the double bonds was halogenation, our first reaction with benzene rings is halogenation. But it works very differently, right? And and for all intents and purposes, for, for all these demonstrative reactions, we're not going to do anything with a ring <coughs> that has any, um, any uh, substituents on it. Okay, so what happens is we have our benzene ring. Okay. And what we have present, uh, it's a really ugly, uh, ugly ring. Okay, so what happens is we have our ring, and then we have these kind of we have these reagents right here, right? So let's say we have bromine, right? Br two, because it's X two, and we have a Br two. So we have Br two, and we have F E x3 so whatever this is so if it's if it's cl it's cl3 if it's br it's br3 so we have fe that fe br3 and i know i didn't draw it you know spatially correct but whatever and then we have just our inert solvent whatever um so what happens is our our bromine okay is uh is begins to associate with the uh the uh the FeBr3 so one of our bromines is going to come and uh attack the the, the iron right and so when it does that we get something like this A pain to write it out, but okay. So we get this, and this becomes negative, and this is now positive. All right, and so when this is when this is now positive, and this is negative, what happens is now this bromine right here becomes extremely uh, electrophilic. Right, and so we have a bromine that's positive, and therefore it's going to start pulling, right, on the sigma bonds and trying to take electron density. So this bromine right here is now very partially positive, and so what I what happens is, I move this over here. What happens is this benzene ring can now abstract, well, not abstract, but take this bromine, okay, and now this bromine will now get its pair of electrons that it that it wants. And then I'll get a a substituted benzene ring. Okay, so I took this bond. So let's say I just attached it right here. I attached the bromine. So what happens is I now I lose I lose a pair. Uh, I lose uh, one of these carbons lost a pair of electrons. So now it's positive. And then all that happens left is that. Um, one of, uh, okay, so what happens now is that uh, one of the bromines from this Fe minus Br4 that forms, so this is going to form FeBr4, okay? And what happens, a pair of electrons from this comes, and we, we, we have a hydrogen here that is not shown. And so this is going to come and abstract this hydrogen and reform the double bond, okay? so. Essentially, what happens is benzene ring comes and attacks the bromine, right? And it it can only attack because now I have formed this association between the FeBr3 and the Br2, and it allows this bromine right here to be very electrophilic. And now that it's electrophilic, the benzene ring can come and attack it. And now once it attacks it, I lose. Uh, I use this double bond or any one of the double bonds in this case to uh, to form this bond. And therefore, I get a carbocation. Okay, and as you should know, every carbon in a benzene ring has exactly one hydrogen, right? So everything has a one hydrogen here. So I broke this bond. I came in attack, and I attached it here. So now I have a bromine and a hydrogen. There's a bromine, and there's always a hydrogen there. And so now to reform the the aromatic structure, right? I'm going to take away this hydrogen, and I'm going to use it to form a double bond, and then I get back my I get back my benzene ring. 
Right, benzene ring is now fully substituted, I mean, fully um, conjugated once again. It's aromatic now. And I have my bromine. Okay, so that's how you would do any uh, halide, halogen substitution on a benzene ring. Okay, so a pretty, it's a pretty basic reaction. <clears throat> now let's move on to the next reaction. The next reaction is the nitration of uh, benzene rings. Okay, so the nitration means adding an NO2 group to a benzene ring. And reminder, NO2 is a withdrawing group. So these are all things you have to be thinking about. So we just, in the last reaction, we added a bromine. A bromine is a deactivating group, but it is all, but it's still ortho para. Okay, it's still ortho para directing. Um, so in this reaction, we have uh, let's see. So we have the HNO3, H2SO4, and heat. And so what happens is the H2SO4 acts as a catalyst, right? And essentially, what, all, all these reactions have a common trend. We have reagents on the arrow, and what these reagents, their purpose is, aside from the inert solvents, um, is to act as, um, they, they react with each other to create a very electrophilic uh, molecule. And then this electrophilic molecule is going to be subject to being attacked by the benzene ring, and then so on and so forth. So what we have is we have this HNO3 molecule. Okay, and so HNO3, okay, and this HNO3 does not have all those little bonds. All right. And um, one of these is negative, and one of these has a hydrogen on it. Okay, and this is positive. Uh, so this is HNO3. And what happens is, <clears throat> what happens is that this HNO3 reacts with H2SO4. So I have my H, O, S, O3, H. So this is my H2SO4, it's my strong acid. And what it does is this, reacts with this, this fashion, okay? So you do not need to know all the details about why this oxygen attacks this one instead of this one. Uh, you don't need to know that. My guess would be that these are resonating and this is a freely uh, available oxygen, but this can obviously be protonated as well, I'm sure. But in the case of this reaction, this uh, gets protonated. Uh, and then this obviously becomes a good leaving group, okay? And so we get this. So I get OH2, now this is plus, plus, this is minus, okay? And what happens is that this Na, uh, this OH2 group freely leaves, okay? And it's a very good leaving group, so it's going to freely leave, and this structure can, can stabilize itself afterwards. So what I get is... So I get a get that right, and the nitrogen still it doesn't have any um, doesn't have any uh, lone pairs on it, so it's still deficient. But I get this NO NO two, and I also get the H two O gone. Okay, and so now this oxygen that has the negative charge is going to now uh, can form the fourth bond here, obviously because nitrogen requires octet. This would be like, this would end up being two plus, because um, it only has three bonds. Okay, so the, at the end of this step, we form the NO2 plus molecule, which is what we want, right? Um, this oxygen will resonate in, and we'll get this NO2, and we'll also we also have the OSO3, OSO3H that's present, and this is important to remember for later on. Um, and so now what happens, just like the last reaction, okay, we're going to have our benzene ring, okay, and the benzene ring is now in the presence of this wonderful electrophile, and so now what it can do, it can just attack it, okay, and this can come out, right, so what I will get, get my benzene ring, and then one of these bonds is broken. 
Okay, so I just chose this one. I know it's oriented differently on whatever, but it's the same thing. Same thing. My double bonds are just different. It's okay. And I will have a... I'll have this now, right? This is what our NO2 group looks like. And then I will have a hydrogen right here. Also a carbocation right here. And there's also a hydrogen right here. Okay, and so now the very last step is to reform our aromatic structure. So this is going to abstract this proton right here, and this proton is going to be used to form a new, a new pi bond. Okay, and so our benzene ring back, then actually nice looking one, and then um, all I would have is my NO two group. And so ignore ignore the, the the orientation of the of the groups whatever but this is the same same molecule as this one okay so um this is how you attach an NO2 and a lot of these a lot of these mechanisms really they're not super important for you to understand but it's it's helpful to understand and to kind of see how you know we use reagents and we're manipulating them in this way so that we can get a good electrophile so we introduce NO3, NO3H, and H2SO4, H HNO3 and H2SO4, and that's going to give us our uh, our good electrophile. All right, moving on. Um, we can just breeze through these really simply, and um, for the majority of you, I'm sure you will just memorize what what adds what and how it works. But really, for me, especially at this point in the semester. It helped me a lot to understand how certain things like made the electrophile and how the react the mechanism worked, and help it really helped me remember remember uh, the reactions because I knew that okay I need to add a bromine so I need FeBr three because that's how that works I need FeBr three and a Br two, and 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 it helped me a lot to remember it in that way. So it will pay off uh, understanding and, and paying attention to the explanation of this stuff. All right, so the next one is the sulfonation uh, or fuming sulfuric reaction. Um, there's two ways this can be written. Um, she might have it written fuming H2SO4, or you can have it uh, SO3, H2SO4, and heat. Okay, they're both the same. They give you the same product um, and nothing really special about it. Okay, and so this also works very similarly to the last uh, last reactions, right? All of them have a similar, similar uh, concept. And that concept has to do entirely with the stability of the benzene ring as an aromatic structure. And so we're trying to introduce very electrophilic groups that the benzene ring can uh, can take and, uh, and be nucleophilic enough, right, to attack. So I have SO3 and H2SO4. And, um, you know, really, th there's nothing special about this. So I have the SO3. And so the SO3 is going to be attacked by the ring. Okay. And um and so that will get me Okay. Um see here. All right. So I'm going to have this and this is going to be resonating out. So I have this SO2 O minus. Let me just draw the whole thing out. All right. So now that's that part. And then all that happens at this point is we have our H2SO4. Okay. So now this is going to abstract the proton from right here. Don't forget our positive charge that's right there. So we still have a positive charge right there. So we have that, that, and I have that. All right, so I get my SO3H. And then all that, that remains to do is... Um, well, actually, I made a mistake. 
my mistake was that um, what happens first in terms of stability, uh, the benzene ring uh, actually uh, regains its aromaticity. Okay, so a uh, small mistake. And uh, so we have our SO, OSO3, H, and this is going to come and extract. Okay, very simple. And we have our benzene ring. Okay, pretty basic. Okay, so here's the corrected, uh, corrected order of things. So what happens first is the OSO3 minus that's present, right? So this is, this is like a, it has a reversible reaction, and we have like a mix of of all these things. So there's there's always going to be OSO3 minus present in the in the reaction, um, uh, in the reaction tube or wherever it's taking place in the environment, and so this is going to be used to abstract this proton and form the double bond and regain aromaticity. And once we regain ar aromaticity, then the stability of this O minus is going to be taken care of. And we're going to take a hydrogen from here, and then we're going to get our, our product. Okay, so what you need to know is that it adds an SO3H, and important, this is a withdrawing group. Okay, so it deactivates the ring. Um, and then uh, just uh, the last one, I know I said it, but NO2 is also a withdrawing group, so remember that. Okay, uh, now on to the next reaction. Okay, and uh, one thing I want to mention at the moment. So let's say that you have a ring that has both activating and deactivating groups. So basically both directing and withdrawing groups, uh, I mean donating and withdrawing groups. And let's say you have both of them on the ring. Okay, how would you choose what is what is like, what is directing? I mean, what is, you know, helping you choose the location that your substituent is going to be on? Is it mo uh, meta? Is it ortho? Is it para? And what you need to remember is that donating groups... So, you know, activators are always more strongly uh, uh, more strongly directing than uh, deactivating groups or with withdrawing groups. Okay, so donating groups much better than withdrawing groups at choosing the location at what what's going to be on the ring. Okay, so just remember, you know, de uh, donating groups are always like activating, right? And so they're going to help the reaction. Withdrawing groups are not helping the reaction. And so therefore, these are going to have more of an effect of the choice of where things are going to be. Okay, so that's just um, something I wanted to say mention really quickly before we go on to the next uh, reaction. All right, so um, the next reaction now is a little bit more uh, unique. And we're going to start getting to like some stuff that's actually pretty interesting. Okay, so the next reaction is an important one. And you're going to keep seeing it. It's called Friedel Crafts alkylation, right? So basically, it's learning how to add um, al uh, alkyl groups or any kind of uh, you know R chain to a uh, to a uh, benzene ring, okay? And we have some rules here, and we'll we'll discuss it. So the general uh, the general mechanism of this reaction it's actually pretty interesting, right? So it's very similar to your FeBr3 uh, Br2 reaction, but it ha it's a little bit different where you have a alka alkane group. Um, so we have a any kind of um, of halogenated alkane, and uh, what it's going to give us is um, an electrophile. So we always want an electrophile in the end. And so what happens is, let's say I have a, let's say I have like CH3. CH3Cl, okay, and I'm going to react this, uh, it's going to be present around AL Cl3, okay, and just like before, Cl is going to interact with the aluminum, and then I'm going to get this kind of, um, kind of new product, so I have the Cl, I have this, uh, I'm going to put CL3 over here. So I have this new interaction that's going on here. Okay. And in this new interaction, um, I get a 
uh, let's see, I get a minus for the aluminum and I get a positive on the chlorine. And so uh, what that makes essentially is this makes this a very good uh, electrophilic group, but essentially this, this is like, essentially it leaves, okay? And I get the AlCl4, okay? And uh, what I really, what, essentially what we're getting at is that we're getting this carbocation, right? So this, this group leaves and then I'm left with a carbocation. And now this carbocation is extremely uh, electrophilic, right? And it's very, it's electrophilic and um, my benzene ring is going to react with it. So I need to delete this. My benzene ring is now going to come and attack this. And essentially, this is this is the mechanism of how we're going to have this uh, alkylation process. And so I have this and add the CH3 right there. So the CH3 gets added right there, and there's a hydrogen right here. And then I have a carbocation here. And then as every time, we're going to restore the aromaticity. And um, we're going to do that using one of these ALCL3s, right, ALCL4, um, and, uh, right, so we use the ALCL4, and we have the chlorine that's out here, and one of his lone pairs is going to come and take that hydrogen, and we're going to reform that double bond, and then we're going to get our, you know, our final product, you know, some benzene ring with whatever uh, R group that was attached to that chlorine. Okay. So now there's some some rules to this. So let's look at the rules. We are not allowed to have any withdrawing groups on the on the ring. So no deactivating groups, right? Um, and uh, on top of that, we cannot have any amino groups. So no no nitrogen uh no nitrogen no NH twos no NHR none of that. So any of those are amino groups. And uh, one of the key features of this reaction um, is that this reaction continues to progress over and over and over until you know we can't progress anymore. And that is because every time we perform the alkylation process, um, we get we get a ring that looks like this, right? We just get we get any benzene ring, and it has an R group on it now. And if you recall, any R group or you know alkane group is an activating group. So even though it's just lightly, lightly in, uh, activating, it's still inductively activating uh, the ring, right? And so what this is going to do, it's gonna keep promoting the reaction to occur and it's going to keep occurring and we're going to keep getting more R groups. We're gonna keep getting more attachments. And this is something that we don't want because let's say I only want to add one R group, but this reaction can't be controlled and it adds multiple R groups. And so what this is called, this is called polyalkylation. And so this is why, uh, just a remind, like a reminder right now, so that when you see it later, we, I'm going to put this in. Okay. All right. And so that's why, as you have it, as you see here, whenever you're doing a synthesis for this exam, and you have to add an R group to a benzene ring in the synthesis, uh, synthesis, whatever, um, you will never use alkylation. And uh, that's because it always gives polyalkylation, uh, polyalkylated products. And so this is garbage for synthesis and you will get points off actually if you use it. And so how do we how do we address this problem? Like if I wanna add an R group to a benzene ring, and you almost always will, how do I address this problem? And so we address this problem by doing a, a different types of, of Friedel crafts. And so, uh, the alternative to this, oh, and on one side note, the poly uh, Friedel Crafts acylation, I mean, Friedel Crafts alkylation can work with primary, tertiary, or or uh, or secondary um, alkyl halides. So it doesn't matter if it's on the end, in the middle, wherever it is, as long as it forms a carbon with a positive charge, that's enough for the benzene ring to go and attack it. Okay, so any kind of carbocation is acceptable. All right, so now let's look at why I miss said uh, an accident. And the next the next type of uh, the solution to this problem of polyalkylation is Friedel Crafts acylation. Okay, so Friedel Crafts acylation. And what's the difference between 
you know the one that we were just doing and um and and this one and essentially we'll we'll, we'll I'll show you guys um how this solves our problem so just like before uh, we have the same rules no strong deactivator so like no withdrawing groups and no amino groups okay but there is no poly a solution uh acetylation that occurs and so it works the same way um we have we have this group right here we have a chlorine Right, so we have an acid chloride, and then um, I'm gonna bring this over here, and then I have my aluminum, right? I have my aluminum, my chloride, whatever, uh, AlCl3, and we're going to have the same association between the chlorine and the aluminum that we've seen before. So we're going to have that association between these two, right? And this group is going to leave. Uh, eventually, and it's going to work the same way. And when it leaves, I get this this product. So I get this R this R group, and it's connected to this carbon. And this carbon is now positive, and it has just a double bond O on it. So now this is what we have. And so essentially, now I just have this this like carbonyl like weird structure that is just floating around. And it's uh has a positive charge on it, and essentially this thing is going to uh be attacked. And it actually, it does have a resonance structure, where one of the lone pairs on the oxygen um, resonates in to compensate for that charge, and we get uh we get this structure. It's not an R. That's that's the resonance structure of this. Okay, and either one of these is acceptable to, to be attacked. And so the benzene ring is going to attack this. Okay, and we get the product that we want. So now I have my O and I have my R now. Okay, and all I have to do left is fix this, which is works the same way. So the chlorine with one of its lone pairs comes and abstracts the hydrogen that's right here. And then I reform my aromatic structure. Okay. And so it works the same way. And I reform my aromatic structure and I get this, I get this attachment, right? So I get this acetylation. Okay. And now that I've attached a withdrawing group, right? So I have a carbonyl now on the structure and that's a withdrawing group. And so therefore, no more uh no more no more uh no more groups can be added so i can't perform it over and over like i did with polyalkylation right so no polyacetylation will occur because now i'm adding a withdrawing group does that make sense so it's pretty cool and so i mentioned that how how would i add an r group i've added an acetyl group but not an r group and so the the way to add the r group uh in this case would be to do the next, uh, there's another reaction that, that would follow with this. And it can convert this structure into just a regular R chain. And we'll look at it after I show you the next reaction. Okay. Um, so the next reaction is, is uh, very similar. Okay. It's like basically the same thing as the Friedel Crafts reaction it's called Gatterman Koch formation. So forming a benzaldehyde. Um, and so we have CO, HCl, AlCl3, COCl. And uh, what we do is we're going to use uh, we're going to use these. Okay. So we're going to use these reagents to uh, basically get the same kind of structure before we have a carbon uh, with like it has a carbonyl on it and has a positive charge as well on that carbon. Um, so what we have is we have CO. And HCl. Well, actually, I don't know if that's the structure. So let's just say we have CO plus HCl, and this is a reversible reaction that will give us this structure. Okay. And then this stru this structure will now react with our aluminum. 
trichloride, trichloride, whatever, and our CoCl. And then this will essentially get us this structure. Okay, so this is the goal right here. And so once we get this, this is now going to be attacked by the benzene ring. Okay, and so now, get that. All right, so this is what we get. And then I have this positive charge, and obviously it works the same way. We get rid of it in the same way. Um, and then we reform our aromatic structure, okay? And so this goes away, and then I get my aromatic structure again. And that's how, uh, so this reaction and the last reaction um, is how we would add um, either a, a ketone or an aldehyde to a benzene ring. All right? I'm just going to put them up uh, one more time, and I'm going to show you how we can use these two reactions. This, these are the two reactions. How we can use these two reactions to uh, essentially get to uh, a R, R, R group, right? So I can add any R group without the effect of acetyl, uh, of polyalkylation by doing uh, this reaction right here. So if I perform the Clemenson reduction, which is where I, I have any any ketone uh, group that is on the, I believe on the benzylic, but it has to be on the benzylic position. And um, I use ZNHG HCl and it will remove, basically, it will completely uh, reduce this uh, carbonyl. And it'll turn it just into a carbon with, uh, with hydrogens on it. And so um, there are some rules. We cannot use this uh, in the presence of alkenes, alkynes, alcohols, or amines. Okay, um, and so we use this uh, to get rid of the carbonyl structure. So this is very useful in these two products of this reaction. So in Friedel-Crafts acetylation, acetylation, I add a some kind of you know carbonyl group, some kind of ketone. Now I have a ketone, right? And then in gatterman koch formation, I have an aldehyde. And if I use uh, ZnHGHCl with any of these. What I will get is, in this case, I'll get a CH3 in this case. And in this case, I'll get a CH2, whatever R group. So let's say I wanted to add a, a CH2, CH3 group to a benzene ring without doing alkylation, friedel cross alkylation, um, because I want to avoid polyalkylation. What I would do is I would first do this step, and then I would do this step, and then I would get my answer, okay? So just remember that this is the this is the methodology for adding any R group to you know whether it's CH three CH two CH three so on and so forth. That's how you add any R group to a benzene ring without the effects of polyalkylation. So I I do an acetylation step first, and then I do Clemson reduction, and then I get my just regular chain. All right, just want to demonstrate that quickly. Um. Okay, and now we'll do one more reaction for this video before uh, we get into the messy stuff. All right, so the last reaction for this video is going to be the reduction of nitro group into an amino group. And basically, it's not, it's not super important, but just wanted to show it. Um, so we can turn any NO2 group using ZnHCl or SnHCl or FeHCl, and we can turn it into an NH2 group. And that's that's really it, okay? So this is now at the beginning of page four, and uh, next video we'll probably do page four, pages four and five. All right. Good luck studying.